Hey, hello, friends. Back out here playing in the garage on the Great Pumpkin 1968 Fire. We're doing the whole 100% overhaul here in my two-car garage. You should see my door behind me. And it is kind of close quarters here in the winter. But anyway, we're going to work on some more rust repair. Yay! But good news is I'm down to just this passenger door, driver's door, and driver's side fender. And I'm finally done with the metal. I think we can do some body work and maybe some paint. Hoping to paint it by spring. Guess we'll see. I have enough of all that. Door had it media blasted. Looked great before media blasting. Um, actually wasn't too bad a shape, except right down here in this corner. And what you see down here is a little bit of rot. This actually rusted from the inside of the door coming out. Um, so the problem with that is, is well, how bad is the rust inside of the door? I can't see through this, so the only way to really investigate is we're going to cut it out and make sure there's good metal and keep cutting further out until I feel that we've actually got good metal to tie it back into and get a really good, strong, and long-lasting repair on this door. Um, but here's why also the flip side is, then if we, I able to typically use what I cut out as a template. Well, let's say if I cut this out and I need to go bigger, well, that's gonna mess up my template. So I got some ideas. I'm gonna drag you guys along, share some tips on how to fix something like this. So first things first, we just need to make some cuts and investigate and see what's going on inside. Now, I don't have any intention of going past the door edge. It's probably gonna be fine. So I'm gonna cut it probably eighth inch in from the front of the door and other than that i'm just gonna wing it and so until we find good clean metal way too. Well, I'll be. So I need to go higher and further over. Okay, now I don't have the rust there. And I'm good on the rust here. So, now my opening is probably big enough. Now I come up with what I'm going to do with all this. It's not bad. It's still got good metal in it, but I think I'm going to have to, of course, we'll just chemically treat it. Probably wire brush all the scaly scale loose off. Then we'll treat it with this and we'll make a little patch panel. Why don't you get here a little bit close up here, but here's where the hole was initially here. You can see the rust line about like that. I cut it right there originally. It wasn't quite high enough. Now we look at this edge here. I don't see any rust festering in that part of it. And same thing across this edge here. We kept having rust, rust, rust. A little rusty here, but the metal still super thick right here. So I think we're going to be fine. I don't want to get too carried away. So I said the next thing is, though, we'll get the door stripped out. while we'll get all the scaly rust out of here. Chemically treat that, and then we'll fabricate a patch. All right, now what I've done here, as you can see, it's actually good clean metal. There is some rusting in here, but that was that rust converter primer. It's still kind of wet. Once that all dries off and everything all better, I'll go ahead and hit that with maybe like a self-etching primer, and then we'll go ahead and proceed with our patch. So we'll give that a few minutes to do its job. Okay, got the primer put all on there. Now what I'm going to do next, so we're going to clean all the metal back, and then we're going to make a template. So basically, you take a little scotch Bright style wheel on your little air grinder or whatever. <laughs> give her a buzz. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
In the past, normally I just use the pieces that I cut out or piece that I cut out to make a template. Well, that's not going to make the best template because it's two pieces. So I'm thinking what we need to do, I'll use my favorite tape here. I'm just going to actually tape over the hole and then paint the car and then it's done, right? No. Um, I love tape. It's cheap. It's plentiful. And the real advantage of the tape when making a template is it's not going to shift and move around as we're making it. But basically, now that I've got the edge all cleaned up, just come through here and use the nail scribe, my fingernail, thumbnail, and basically do the outline of the shape. And that'll give me a really close shape to what I need to cut out of my patch panel. I know, not super high tech, but it works and it's cheap. Now, as long as the tape doesn't come apart when I peel it off, I should have a relatively accurate template. Now, on the camera, it's going to be hard to make out, but I assure you there's a crease line and you can see it right there. Now, let's come back now and cut that out. And the cool thing is that I'll take this piece of tape and then I'll stick it right here to my free cycled piece of metal from the fender patch and I'm ready to cut it out. There we go. Now we can check it here to our door and see how bad it really is. I think we should be pretty good though. Look at that corner needs to be trimmed off just a, just a tiny bit. Not bad. Okay, now. Again, one more last little checkeroo here, and I say it's gonna work pretty good. Now, the even cooler part is, you got your chunk of metal here, I guess this is left over from our fender repair. It has kind of a contour radius to it. We just stick it right here on our piece of metal. And again, it's not gonna shift, it's not gonna move around. Then it's come out here and just the old death wheel or whatever cutoff wheel, cut this thing out. We got our patch panel ready to go. All right, here we go. All right, got it all cut out. You can see the tape holds up pretty good. Got it trimmed all the way to the tape line and everything. So how well does it fit? Well, let's go ahead and try it into place. Put it in here, and as you can see, pretty snug fit all the way around. So the tape method works really nice. Now I've discussed, and I need to get probably better at it, but I'm just not the best at cutting corners. Ha uh ha, -huh, bad joke, but a radius corner is more ideal. So make, make a corner or a radius in the corner, but I'm just not good at cutting those out. So I'm just gonna stick to this method for me, it works, but um, they, they are teaching that a radius in a corner is more ideal. You do it however you see fit, but I'm gonna say this is ready to be, go ahead and start tack welding it into place. So let me get the tape peeled off of here. Oh, come on now, St tape stuck too good. Now this is the thing where making a template out of paper and tracing it, you can have room for error. But my goodness, this tape is not budging. Ah, probably because I got it hot when I cut it. Makes the adhesive a little more stickier. Okay, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this EDP back off the edge. Now if this wasn't primed on the backside, this is the time now to go ahead and put some kind of self-edge primer or something on the backside. So at least it has some corrosion protection. Because here's why this door rotted from the factory. It's all bare steel inside of these doors. So yes, I'm aware there's rust festering here, we're hitting in here, around the whole bottom of the door. It's gonna rust no matter what. Um, so where do you stop? Where do you draw the line? I guess that's a matter of opinion. You can buy all new panels, but you're gonna quadruple your budget. So this here is a repair that I've done on many doors. Seems to hold up very good. Now these cars, when you're done, they're not gonna see the salt and the slop and the crap anymore. So it's definitely gonna slow down rust, but no matter what you do, they're gonna rust again. So uh, a little preventive maintenance with the paint inside, but uh, it's just, I don't know, it'll drive a guy crazy trying to figure out where to stop going to get all of the rust out of the car you're going to find that it's practically impossible. So anyway, let's get this go ahead and cleaned up and we'll get it welded into place. Right. Now these magnets are handy to help get things kind of positioned, but they will screw and arc up something fierce. So don't leave the magnet on during the entire process. Um, I, I use it as kind of a way to manipulate the panel, get it into place, and then pull the magnet out of here. But uh, I might need to file on this. So. Made such a nice snug patch panel here. No, I think it's okay. It felt a little snug on that back edge. I was going to run into some troubles, I thought.
right. Height feels good. So now what I do is keep going around, 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 keep doing tacks, let it cool off a little bit and until you get it burned in solid. So how did we do? Well, look at this here. Came out pretty good. A little bit of a dip right here, but not bad. Uh, I'm gonna say we're probably within the acceptable amount of, what I say would be filler wise. You really can't see it in the camera. I don't really feel, but uh, you get the idea. The bottom edge didn't really warp at all, but there's also that body line that comes right through here. So that looks really good. So that one welded in nice. This welded in good, good. So I'm gonna give that like an A minus, B plus, somewhere around there. So super happy with that. It's gonna work out great. So I gotta do the driver's door, the exact same thing. Corner's gone. Work on the driver's fender, not nearly as rusted as this fender was. So that should go pretty quick. And hopefully keep on moving along and get this thing painted by spring. So uh, I probably won't do a video on the other door because it's the same thing you just saw here on this door. Um, so there's no reason, I think, to duplicate that driver's side fender. It's kind of like this fender patch here, but a whole lot smaller. So works on the same premise. So hopefully those things I can knock out behind the scenes and keep working on getting towards the end goal. And then I'll get the camera out for the next part of the uh, process. And I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to go about it yet, but I need to get some tires. The vintage air kit. Um, by the way, it did show up. They told me three month back order, one month, and it was actually here. Unfortunately, my interior kit, being on the deluxe interior, they said 12 months, and that's only been about a month. So it's gonna be some time. That may be the hang up on getting this car done in a timely manner, waiting on parts. So I guess what I wanna say there is if you need something special for your car, Maybe it's kind of high dollar. You better check the back order time on it. You may put yourself in a pickle if you're trying to hit a certain date to have it done by. So I don't normally buy the interior at this point of the journey. I kind of say that for later because, you know, space is limited. I don't want this part sitting here until I need them. But then again, I don't want to wait for that clock to start counting down six months, eight months from now when I almost need it. So I went ahead and ordered it knowing that it might take up to 12 months. So I wanted to share that with you too. This stuff uh, has a little bit of interesting dynamic trying to get things done in a timely manner and on a budget. Uh, but anyway, I'm not sure 100% what we're doing next. I may dig into the vintage air kit. A lot of you guys are seeing, hey, how's that go in there? How's it work? And I got a few little upgrades and some modifications that I'm going to try on this one um, that I think going to turn out really nice. So maybe I'll start doing the vintage air kit next time. Go around. Actually, yeah, I think I might just made my decision up. So anyway, hope you guys found this stuff useful. Any questions, concerns, or on that vintage air kit stuff, hit me up in the questions now, parts that you want highlighted if you want to see that, but I'll kind of go through the basic installation, hopefully in the next couple, two or three videos on that one. It's a pretty big deal of getting that stuff hooked up and working right. So anyway, enough of this. I've rambled on enough. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to get back to working out here, grab the camera, and uh, we'll see you guys then.